You're listening to another episode of On Our Best Behavior, and today my guest is a fellow Pyrex addict, Pyrex collector, vintage seller, and potential hoarder. She also hosts her very own podcast, the Pyrex with Bex podcast. Welcome, Rebecca Scott. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. I'm so glad <laughs> to be joining you today. So, you know, I kind of summed up who I think you are. Tell me who, tell us who you are. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sounds good. I think what you said was exactly right. I'm definitely a hoarder. Um, I've just gotten through the denial phase and come into acceptance of this and definitely a hoarder of Pyrex and vintage. So I hadn't always loved vintage. I've always loved antiques, but um, Pyrex has kind of become part of my life in the last four or five years. So it really came into being for me at the beginning of the pandemic. And I'm from Canada. And right now I live in a small town in, it's called Innisfil, Alberta. And right now it's very snowy and it's going to be minus 51 degrees Celsius on Friday here. So I'm preparing for the cold weather. Um, but that's a little bit of our piece of Canada. I'm from a town called Calgary. It's a bigger town in Canada, um, if any of your listeners know where that's from. And I have three kids, three dogs, uh, two chihuahuas, and a cane corso mastiff. Oh my gosh, what a cats. funny combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have two little dogs and then a huge dog. <laughs> yeah. The little dogs think they're big dogs and the big dog thinks she's a little dog. So it's a weird combination. <laughs> oh, I'm such uh, a dog lover, so I had to chirp in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then you have oh, two yeah. two cats? Yes. Okay. Um, a very overweight cat named Jack and then a little kitten named Maggie. So she was my husband's Christmas present um, to help with the mice in his shop that he has. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. That works out good. Yeah. And for my day job, I am a social media manager and graphic designer. So that's my nine to five. Um, I have a company that I've been running for about 10 years now. And my side hustle is reselling vintage as well as collecting and keeping the Pyrex. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't always pan out on being a hustle. <laughs> I mean, no, money wise. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I think I've lost more money having this addiction than than yeah. made. So, <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I know. I struggle with that too. Like, there's been a time where I'm like, oh, I think I'm ahead, and then sometimes I'm like, mm, you know, questionable. <laughs> yeah, I've listened to a bunch of reselling podcasts, and they're like, you need this software. You need to keep track of what you're spending on gas and mileage and what you're buying at the thrift stores and what you're selling. I'm doing that. <laughs> I don't honestly don't want to know, like, right? Yeah. Uh, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you also, so um, it was funny, my husband the other day, he's, he was like, hey, have you heard of this uh, website called Whatnot? And I'm like, yes, my friend Bex sells her Pyrex on there. And mm -hmm. I've actually never been on there. Um, so he was like, kind of telling me about it. And I'm like, I know about this from you. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So Whatnot is relatively new for me. I got into it because of an Instagram friend that I met um, who was also selling on Whatnot. So it's really big in the States. It's not as big in Canada just because of the shipping prices um, for Americans. So most buyers are American on there and the shipping ends up being like $24 just for one little item. So it's mm -hmm. not the easiest to sell on, but it's really fun. You go on live and you have all of your items ready to go and you hold them up and it's an auction essentially. And people slide kind of like um, online dating, but you're sliding to, <laughs> to win the items and it can get pretty heated if somebody really wants the item that you want as well. Uh, but it's super fun to sell on it and you get to chat with people in the comments. Uh, and there's a pretty decent growing community of vintage sellers on there now. It started off mostly with people reselling clothing and buying pallets and overstock from Amazon and department stores. So you can get really great deals on clothes, but it's fun too to sell Pyrex on there and kind of meet people and make some money at the same time. 
is it nerve wracking to like show up and be live and then you hope people like are going to come and watch you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. On my first few shows, I had, I think, two or three people (laughs) in the sale and you have to keep the dialogue going. So you're essentially talking to yourself. And I remember it dropped down to one person in the room and I was like, oh, no, what do I talk about? So I just started rambling. Um, But the more you go on there, the kind of easier it gets and the more people start following you. So it's definitely one of those things where if you're doing it, you have to commit and keep doing it to see some results. Yes, that sounds intimidating to me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. So what sparked your interest in collecting Pyrex? Mm -hmm. So I blame it on my grandparents and I'm very grateful that they kind of led me to this, but it all came about because of the pandemic happening and they needed somebody to help them clean out their garage. And they have um, a double and a single garage and it was full from floor to ceiling of just things they'd collected over the years, um, brand new appliances and furniture. Um, So my family finally convinced them to get in there and start clearing things out. And one of them was this big Rubbermaid bin of old um, items from my great aunt. And inside were three pieces of Pyrex. And at that point, I'd always thought Pyrex was the measuring cups and that kind of thing that my mom used. And that's all it was to me. Um, But I saw this lasagna pan and some of the primary bowls in there. And I kind of fell in love instantly just with the colors and the shapes. And I took them home and started doing research on them and found out that they're actually valuable. And not only were there these few colors that I found, there were hundreds of different types of casseroles and dishes and pans. And it kind of just spiraled from there. So you have the hoarding gene in your blood. I I do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> because your grandparents had all that stuff. That's amazing. Definitely. I wish someone in my family had a gar- <laughs> garage is just full of stuff. Like, go through this and see what you want. Yeah, but it's not in my it's not in my blood. I might be the first one to to start the <laughs> the addiction in my family. And if anyone is, they're really good at hiding it. <laughs> I always say my kids have no hope. If it's not Pyrex, they're going to collect. It'll be something else that they're going to. Because your husband through. collects like cars and or that's his hobby and so he does expensive yeah yeah so between the two of us the genes we've given them something's gonna happen (laughs) (laughs) so when you're collecting do you focus on specific patterns or time periods in pyrex history what do you what do you what did you start looking for and where are you at now Mm -hmm. so i started looking for the primaries um i kind of fell in love with the colors of them And I'm not usually drawn to colors, except you can see my bookshelf in my background. It's going to make me a liar. It's all rainbow colored. (laughs) It's all coded. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) With exception to this bookshelf behind me, um, I usually wear like black and darker colors and color kind of scares me when it's in a house. So the primary bowls, I have them all displayed and those are the first ones that I started looking for. And then I discovered that there's the primary bowls without stamps that are even more special um, to collect. So I think I ended up with five or six primary sets at the beginning of my collecting. And I kept them for a few years and eventually parted with them and sold them. Um, But those were always the first ones that I kind of gravitated towards and the reverse primary as well, just because they were so pretty and I could picture somebody in the 50s using them in their kitchen um and it kind of just it's a nice nostalgic thing to think about how come you collected so many sets of the same of the same whatever not, it wasn't it's not really a pattern but the same yeah i can't think of the right word collection <laughs> that's a good question um i think it kind of became a game for me it's like oh i can get this set for this much money and then can i get one for cheaper and then just kept hoarding them um <laughs> And here where I live, it's about $100 Canadian for a full set of primary. Um, So I don't know if that compares. Yeah. yeah. That's about what? 100 American, right? And I think Mm -hmm. Canadian money is 
more than American. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, so in Canada, it sounds like it's harder to find Pyrex than in the States. I think so. Yeah. I've been to um, a few places in the States where I've found things that we would never find here. Um, So I think depending on the pieces that you're looking for, we have a lot of certain ones here in Canada. Um, But even just on my summer vacations, um, I was able to find some really awesome Christmas pieces in Portland, Maine. Um, And I always have family members in the States looking for me. So I think you guys have a, a great selection. Canada's on my bucket list to go to. I haven't been there. Um, I really want to go to Banff. Yes. So that's on my list. But yes, yeah, so I don't know. I don't really have any any um, association with Canada, but I want to. <laughs> well, so now that we've met, you can come and hang yeah. out with me. Yeah, we can, go to we can Banff thrift and- together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take so you to all the you- spots. Yeah, yeah. All the hot- you know all the hotspots because you check them. <laughs> frequently. Yes. Now, how do you go about finding rare or vintage Pyrex pieces for your collection? Mostly on Marketplace. Okay. Um, so there's quite a few good resellers on Marketplace in my area. Um, and we kind of all have gotten to know each other. Um, lots of people who I just keep track of and I follow them and then we'll message each other um, and then just kind of either trade or buy pieces. And it's a lot easier than having to go to an antique store where the prices are going to be jacked up a ton. Um, I've also found a few on eBay, which is great. I'm always more weary of shopping online because you can't tell if something is authentic or real or if it's going to arrive broken. Um, I've bought a few things on Poshmark and they're described in one way and then you get them and there's big scratches or chips or cracks. And so it's always nice if you can go and take a look at something before you buy it. eBay is really good at the buyer is always right. I've Mm -hmm. sold on eBay a lot. And um, is Poshmark like that? So when you've gotten something that isn't as described, are they pretty good about having your back and protecting your purchase? Um, Yeah, they're pretty good. The only downside is if it's something breakable, They have a disclaimer now that says, if you're going to be selling this, know that we're probably not going to cover you. Um, Mm. So if you're a seller, it's a bit risky. Um, But yeah, for the most part, if you're buying something on Poshmark, they usually, they're pretty good that way. Yeah, I know. eBay, if anything is wrong, like you get your money back. Like they don't even, Mm -hmm. they don't even, they don't even ask the seller anything. It's just like, if the buyer's not happy, too bad, so sad. Yeah, I've Which read a lot I've of bought, that. Yeah, I've bought a lot on eBay too. And if I've ever had an issue, like they are just 100% about the, the buyer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to say <laughs> anything else about that. Um, so you said that the primary set is kind of your favorite. Over mm-hmm. time, since the beginning of your collecting to now, is it still like the timeless piece for you? Your favorite? Um, I've kind of moved away from it a little bit. I've kept one set of each, um, the reverse and the, just the regular primary and then the Friggy set. Um, but now my main focus is on the pinks. Um, uh, so I have the four piece mixing bowl set, uh, the refrigerator set. I'm missing the covered casseroles though, the 023 and 024. So I'm on the hunt for those. Mm. Anybody out there has them? <laughs> I, think um, I haven't i think i have an 024 oh, nice. <laughs> i think i have a handful of them so i'll have to show you later <laughs> yes <laughs> um and then my husband loves the white snowflake on the black charcoal so that's been my next um pattern to collect and there's only six pieces in the whole pattern you'd think that would make it easy to find all six but it definitely isn't um they the price of them is pretty high here. So I have both of the oval casseroles. I still need the 575, um, the ones that come with the cool metal lids, the freezer mm. dishes. The space savers. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones are great. Um, and then I have the oval divided dish and just need the the open baking dish. So those okay. are 
those are on my list. <laughs> I know. I am blessed. I have uh I have the blue, the black, and the white oh. space saver snowflakes. I have the space savers are kind of like my weakness. And I have, I think, I mean, except for like the Starburst, mm -hmm. the turquoise Starburst one. I mean, that's but for Christmas last year, I think I got the my husband got me the mu the music staff. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a I think gift. I have, yeah, I think I have all of them except for the Starburst. And then I don't have the – I just got the pink scroll was my most recent mm -hmm. one. But the pink daisy one is the one I don't have. That oh, okay. has been yeah. tricky to find for like a fair price. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I know I have them all. I, in my living room, I have a – I have two hutches and one of my one hutch is like all my all time favorites. And then the other one I try to like rotate like through this like every month or something like try yeah. to swap them out for kind of like what what the, the the trend is. So like if it's mm -hmm. wintery or if it's, you know, Fourth of July or if it's Easter or whatever, I'm kind of try to put those colors out. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I just feel like you can't display ones. all of them at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever attended any Pyrex related events or conventions? I haven't. And okay. I see in the States that there's Pyrex swaps all the time. Yeah. And I've always been curious about what they were because in my mind, Pyrex swap was you go and everybody brings all their best Pyrex and then you just say, oh, do you want to trade? But then I realized it's more like a flea market, which is great as well. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I I've done so we there's one that they do every year uh here near me and you if you're a vendor I think the the vendors can kind of will swap amongst each other like hey you know oh, kind of okay. before everyone gets there kind of check out like what do you have what do you have I really want that do I have anything that you want that's comparable kind of do the swap but then if you're not a vendor then you get to go buy and I do agree like I think what did I get the last one I went I got the the fetus bowl. Mm, yeah. And I was really excited about that. <laughs> and then I got like a, the yellow 401 striped rainbow bowl. Mm, and I was I really excited ones. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's fun. I do feel like they have more of the stuff that you don't see very often in real life. Like mm -hmm. I'll always tell my husband, Justin, I'll be like, I've never even seen that in real life. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, it's, it's a dish. <laughs> it's so rare. Yeah. You know, or my son will be like, is that rare, mom? And I'll be like, no, it's not rare, but it's hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> All these different categories that they have. Uh, I think I might have to start a pirate swap where yes, I live. Yes, you should. Yeah, and you have, I, it sounds like you've already built a community, you know, on Marketplace and, and such. So you would already have like a good base of people. Yeah, and there's so many uh, little thrift stores and antique shops in all the small towns around me so that I could just rally everybody together and we could all swap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I created – so it's funny. I my and, and I, I don't have a lot of good ideas. <laughs> I like to always take claim for them, but my husband is a genius. And he's like, you know what you should do? You should start a Facebook group. And we live in Minnesota. And it is mini snowda right now. We got snow today <laughs> as well, but it is not going to be negative 51. It was 32 today, oh, which is lucky. really warm for January. Mm -hmm. And anyway, he's like, you should start a Minnesota Pyrex Facebook group. And then you're the admin. And so every mm -hmm. time people post in there, you have to approve it. And so you get to see what's coming through first. And then you get first dibs at it. That's and smart. I'm, that is so smart. And now I have well over a thousand members in that group so yeah it's been great oh i should join in secret even though i don't live in your area <laughs> <laughs> well you can join i'll let you join you know that the whole the shipping situation sucks but you know oh, we do a lot does, of like yeah. the front the front step pickup or whatever and mm -hmm. that works out really good but yeah it is awesome to be able to be like okay i you know, some people will let their groups be open and just let people post whatever they want to. But I'm like, oh, no, yeah. I am going to look and see what it is first, because if I want it, then I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have That's to really like, approve it. I'm just like, oh, never mind. Sold. <laughs> love it. I'm going to do that right after we're done. I'm going to create my own group as well. <laughs> Yay. I love it. 
<laughs> so speaking of starting groups, what advice do you have for someone just starting their Pyrex collection? Oh, that is a good one. Um, I would say purchase the Pyrex Passion Book. Um, God, that yes. has been my number one the Pyrex Bible. Bible. Yeah, the Bible. Um, <laughs> and then I just bought the second one to it. That's more of the like, table and um, plates and mugs in it. It's a really cool read um, if you like the other side of Pyrex. And what else? Always research and check prices. My biggest downfall at the beginning of collecting was buying anything and everything that I saw. I had so many dishwasher damaged pieces and pieces that I spent way too much money on. Um, and if I would had just taken some time to buy the book or research and not kind of get carried away, I think I would be further along in my collecting than I am now. Um, but it's kind of all part of the journey, learning and um, yeah, I don't regret it. But I think if you're starting off, that's a good way to go. Um, and also, as we were talking about Facebook groups, I was thinking of another piece of advice would be join positive Facebook groups because I've found that there's so many out there that aren't positive that it can really deter you from wanting to continue to collect or um, really enjoying being a collector. And there's been a few times where I've felt kind of embarrassed asking questions about Pyrex because there's some people who think that you should know or they kind of shoot you down because you don't know. So finding a, a good group of people is always a great thing when you're starting off. I would 100% agree with that. There is, I think with all, all social media, there is always such a heavy negative side. Mm -hmm. And so finding that positive right group, people who are willing to help you and not cut you down. And the other thing too is, you know, a lot of people I'll see on those groups, and maybe you've had this experience as well, where somebody will say, I found this piece and they want this much money for it. And then everyone's like, that's too much. That's mm -hmm. a rip off. That's whatever, whatever. Or even if you post something for sale, some people will be like, that's ridiculous, blah, 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 blah. And I always say like, when you're buying and selling antiques or collectibles, something that you can't just go to Target and buy, it's, it is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. Exactly. So it depends on how much you want it, how long you've been searching for that one piece to finish your collection or set. So sometimes, you know, you do have to spend a little bit more, but yeah. there are a lot of avenues where you can find things very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. I agree. And if you, as long as you're not in a rush to get everything, I think patience. <laughs> yeah. Patience helps I mean, too I with the patience and i think like the the part of the addiction that fuels our fire is the thrill of finding something that you've mm -hmm. been looking for is super exciting and just really gets you going because you can't just be like oh okay well to, today i'm going to spend a hundred dollars and i'm just going to go to the store and buy this 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 and this it doesn't work like that yeah you have to wait for it to pop up and it has to be the right price and the right location or the right shipping or so many things have to align for it to work out Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thrill of it is hands down my favorite part. There's been a few times where I've seen something sitting on a shelf. Um, that's where I got my last um, white and black snowflake. It was at a Goodwill. And I think I almost pulled somebody over trying to get to it. I was like, no, <laughs> it's like, mine. I hope no one else sees that because it's yeah. mine. <laughs> and then I had to stop and be like, wait, I need a video for my reels of me finding this dish. So I had to reverse like, Oh no, now it's not going to look <laughs> right. So I just gave up. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, I know I've done that too. I've been at Goodwill or whatever. And I'm like looking in everyone's carts. Like what are they, what did they yeah. get? You know, what did they, get? <laughs> like, yeah. there better not be anything in their cart that I really want. <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard stories of people seeing things in other people's carts and actually stealing it out of it. So I'm always worried about that. So I keep my cart very close to me. I would never do that. I would just be like, that was a good find. You got lucky. I'm, yeah, you're lucky yeah. that you got here five minutes before I did. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, come on. Be a friend, right? Everyone's yeah. so, so mean and competitive and it's too bad. 
Yeah, and it's definitely not worth fighting over a dish. As much as I love them, it's just definitely kidding. not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Dep- depends on what it is, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. If you have yeah. that duchess, I'm looking for I'm going to say, you want that duchess, like maybe yeah. then <laughs> you might go to some yeah. some different uh, levels. <laughs> yeah, I keep talking about it. So hopefully it just shows up one day and putting it out there in the universe. Like Since duchess, we talked the duchess. last time, I Googled it because I was like, what is this mm. duchess I don't even know about? But it's totally not my avenue. So yeah. if I ever find it, I'll send it your way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like the I like the more the milk glass with the paint and the patterns and the colors. I'm not mm. as much into the like clear with the – because right, it's kind of – is it clear with pink on it? Like the pink? Um, it's solid pink. Yes. Yeah, with the little – Little glasses on. that hang around. No. Um, nope. This one is like a, a rounded casserole. Well, maybe I was looking at the wrong thing, so I'll have to. <laughs> maybe you do. Maybe you will like it and you won't send it to me. <laughs> no, I will. I will send it to you because <laughs> it's clearly not on my radar after all these years. So <laughs> I will definitely have your back on that one. I know how much you want it. <laughs> do you have any other interesting stories about um, your Pyrex collecting journey? That sounds like story was good. <laughs> <laughs> my number one would probably be my husband. This is my husband's story, but I'm going to tell it. Um, See, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is in one of my um, previous episodes, but um, I talk about where I had this Bertha and it was a butterfly gold Bertha. My very first one that I'd ever found. I think I paid $120 for it and it had no flea bites or anything. I was so excited, brought it home. And my husband asked me if he could make a roast in it that night. So I said, sure, go ahead. Um, I said, I as long as I, you. I wanted to cry when I heard this story. <laughs> uh, I, still, I still have tears in my eyes to this day. Um, but I said, as long as you take a video of it so that I can put it on my Pyrex account, because this is the first time we've used the Bertha and I've never had one. So I went out shopping with my mom and I get this text message from him and it's a picture of the Bertha in a bajillion pieces on the floor. And it ended up that he had taken a video, but he put the Bertha on the stove top and turned the stove on to make a sauce with the roast and it exploded. And he was using red wine as well. So there was red wine on our ceiling, on our walls. Oh my gosh. And I'm glad he was okay. But after I found out he was, I had to, you know, every ounce of me was like, oh no, it's okay. Don't worry. It's just a dish. <laughs> oh, did he get, yeah. did he get like hit with glass? He did. Luckily he didn't get hurt and nothing cut him, but it went everywhere. And luckily as well, our kids weren't in the kitchen, but he every time now he goes to use a piece of my Pyrex, he says, "Is this safe? Can I do this? Can it go here?" <laughs> I think he has PTSD. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> I I won't use it. Like I, I have a handful of Big Berthas, and I will not use. Like there's a lot of mm-hmm. things I won't use. I used a lasagna pan one time, and I was real nervous. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'll use like if I buy, you know. I'll, if we go to like a, a flea market or something and I'll see like a dishwater water damaged piece and it's like a dollar or whatever, sure, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll buy it and I'll use it in the kitchen. Um, or like we use like cereal bowls or soup bowls are all just like the Pyrex ones that are, you know, they're not pretty. They're they're scuffed up or they have a chip or they're faded. So yeah. then, you know, then we just use those. <laughs> but I – and. I've been gifted a few pieces, like casserole dishes, and I'll use those. But anything that's like, you know, a hundred dollars or more, or super hard to find, I will not use it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm too scared yeah, of something happening to it. It's nerve wracking using them. Yeah. We had a a potluck at work not that long ago, and somebody had like a four hundred four early American bowl that they brought with their food in there. And I was like, whose is that? <laughs> and it was this girl. 
Kara. And she's like, I knew when you saw it, you were going to be so proud of me. And I'm like, yeah. I am proud of you. And then the next day, I was clear, cleaning out the dishwasher at work and it was in there. No. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, who put this in the dishwasher? And she's like, Kelly, it's been in the dishwasher so many times. And I'm like, <laughs> No, 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 you can't do yeah. that. And it was still like, you couldn't tell it had ever been in the dishwasher. Oh, wow. It looked really great. But yeah. I'm like, it's only a matter of time before that, that's going to just all fade away. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some funny posts on Facebook groups where people are buying things from, for Pyrex from people. And they send them a message and say, okay, I'll make sure to clean it and put it in the dishwasher for you before you come and pick it up. And they're like, no. <laughs> I'll do Just that. sell it to me dirty. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so sad. Mm -hmm. How do you display your Pyrex or store your collection? Um, when I first started, I bought a bunch of IKEA cabinets. So most of it went up in the China cabinets and then we moved. And now sadly a lot of it is in boxes. But the ones that I do have, I cut out little cardboard um, feet for them and then I have them in the stacks in cupboards. Uh, so my pink ones, my primary ones, um, and then what else do I have displayed? I have some mugs displayed as well. So all my favorite ones are in the cabinets and my dad even rigged up some LED lights. So I have a little remote that it. changes colors. Um, that was his engineering moment for me. So I love that. that was, fun. Mm -hmm. was it hard to move all your Pyrex? It was. That yeah. sounds scary. <laughs> I let my husband do all the packing because I'm not good at it at all. Um, he packs everything when I sell things and then he packs if we have to move anywhere. So we had a very big section of our moving van and trucks full of just my Pyrex dishes and all my vintage stuff and um, yeah, luckily only three bowls didn't survive the move, um, but that was okay. They weren't any anything special. So <laughs> I think about that. Like if I ever move, oh, what mm -hmm. a job that's going to be. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes I think like maybe I should downsize. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Why would I ever? Why would that thought ever cross my mind? <laughs> There's always a way to even people even move across states and to other countries with their Pyrex. So there's always a way. There is a way. Is, <laughs> I know. I just think of it like rattling around in like a U-Haul truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so usually you... how I. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Go ahead. I was just going to say that's usually how I sound when I'm coming home from the thrift store. Things rattling in the back, and it's oh, yes. everybody knows coming down the street that I've been to to Goodwill or Value Village, and it's like a, a little bell to mm. warn my husband to to hide. <laughs> you might want to close your eyes, honey. Yeah, yeah. nothing's coming in the door. No, nope. uh, he, you, your husband is very supportive. You're very lucky to have him. He is. He is. Yeah, he is supportive and helpful, and. He also has his own stuff. So then you guys have a good balance between each other and forgiveness and mm -hmm. understanding. <laughs> and I'm lucky that he enjoys cooking more than I do. So it kind of sweetens the deal if he has a nice matching set of Pyrex to put his, his cooking in. So he, he wins a little bit too. <laughs> I'll do that. We do a lot of work, like I'll bring, you know, everybody brings something and I will use my, uh, my like brownie pans. Mm -hmm. So like the crazy daisy and the pink and I'm trying to think what other ones I've brought and everyone's like, oh, we know Kelly brought that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, just Kelly remember, dish. do not put it in the dishwasher when, when it's done. I will clean it if. Yeah. Just don't put, just put it in the sink. I got it. <laughs> it's a one and only rule. <laughs> so my next question is, you also host a podcast and it is solely about Pyrex. It's called mm -hmm. the Pyrex with X podcast. So what inspired you to host a podcast? So one of my friends is a podcast producer. And when I met him, it was always on my radar to start a podcast and initially I'd thought that it would be 
something to do with my nine to five job, probably about social media, tips and tricks like that. Um, but it's so saturated with marketing podcasts out there right now that I figured why not do something about what I genuinely love and my passion. That's a hobby that I'll really enjoy. Um, so I started up the podcast not too long ago. Um, episode nine is coming out soon and it's just been a great way to talk about it to myself when I don't have a guest <laughs> and talk about things um, that my friends wouldn't necessarily enjoy um, and meet <laughs> other collectors um, and just learn about other people's collections and what they love about vintage. So it's been really fun just doing something kind of out of my comfort zone because I'm a huge introvert as well. So um, it kind of pushes me to do something that's new and exciting. Yeah, I'm really proud of you because you had said that you are an introvert. Mm -hmm. And I saw that you your 2024 resolution was to post more of yourself on your social media yes. because it's always Pyrex. And I am excited about that. I think that you are so cute. You have such a good personality. <laughs> and I, lo I love your posts. I just listened, I think it was last night, to your podcast when you were talking about the mushrooms. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, I look forward to your episodes because I learned from them. And you're into some different things that I wouldn't say that I'm not into, but are kind of off my radar. And so it's mm -hmm. interesting to hear about other things vintage and their kind of story and where they came from and like the differences between the states and and Canada things that you just don't really know or think about so i think that you do a really great job um, with that mm, thank and, you. and and i was going to say and i also think like you just getting on whatnot and and selling things in a live auction is also amazing i don't think that i'm an introvert at all and i am would be terrified to do that <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely intimidating. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's fun to find new things like that and trying to push myself a little bit more every year to do new stuff. Do you feel like it's getting easier? Like your introvertness? Do you feel like you're kind of getting out of that shell? I think so. Yeah. It, it definitely helps um, recording the podcasts and interviewing people and um, doing the live sales. You kind of get more confident in what you're saying and that you kind of know what you're talking about. And um, so it's really good from a growth perspective that way. And my next kind of leap in the selling world was going to be to try starting Instagram lives. But I think the shipping issue is going to come up with the high price to ship outside of Canada. So I might, I might try it, but not sure yet. Yeah, when I see stuff on eBay, I'll be like, oh, it's in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's so expensive to ship it. Yeah. Sometimes it's more expensive to ship it than to, than you pay for the item. That's tough, yeah. Yeah, I've seen some items that are like $20, but shipping is 50 so it better be a great item for them. <laughs> no, and then it's like, is it worth the $70, right? So Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to share? I think just for anybody who has a collection of Pyrex or you love collecting vintage or anything that's kind of out there and not what mainstream um, or what mainstream would be, I guess. Just keep going with it. I When I started collecting Pyrex, my friends thought I was crazy um, and they always called me the old, the old lady with the old lady bowls. And But I think if you love something and you really enjoy it, um, you'll find your people and your community and that's all that really matters. And I think having a collection like this in my life has made such a huge difference just with, especially over the pandemic, not having anything to do, having something to focus on. Um, and now that we're kind of out of that part of our lives for the most part, I still have that in my life and I'm able to um, teach my kids about different historic times and different dishes and recipes and kind of involve them that way. And it's really nice. I think it's one of those things when people are like, uh, what's a, what's a fun fact about you that people don't know if it's a new group of people. And then when they find out that you're, you know, not 60 plus and you <laughs> collect vintage dishes or yeah. anything vintage, they're like, really? 
Yeah. It's surprising to them. And then it leads into stories like, well, my grandma this or my parents this or, you know, so and so and so and so. Like everyone has a story. And mm -hmm. then you get to hear about that. And as somebody who is a collector and is super into that, you want to hear those things. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun hearing the history behind a piece, um, especially if it's somebody saying, oh, I got this for my wedding or my husband gave this to me or this was my mom's. And every time I use it, it brings back those memories. And those are always my favorite people to sell to as well, because they've been searching forever for a set or a certain bowl. And it kind of completes that memory for them once they get it. And it's nice being a part of that. I enjoyed your episode where you were talking about that gentleman who was trying to find the Mary Mushroom canisters mm -hmm. because his mom had them and there was X amount of siblings and everybody, they were trying to kind of piece back together that set. So every one of the kids could have one in remembrance of their yeah. mom. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is so sweet. Yeah, that's one of, that's a great example of just somebody who really appreciates all of the work that goes into finding these items. And if I can sell things to somebody like that all day, every day, I would just because he was so happy to receive them when he came to pick them up. And he was almost crying because mm -hmm. he said he didn't have a great relationship with his mom, but it was just a way of remembering her and being closer to her um, and his siblings as well. I often think about that with with actually every single piece of Pyrex. I think, like, what kind of life did this bowl live? You mm -hmm. know, how many families was it in? What did it see behind closed doors? You know, some of these were in the 50s and the 60s. And I mean, they have lived a lot of life. Yeah. And I often wonder, like, am I the second person that they've seen? Or have they seen 20 people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, like, if... You know, like you think about old houses, like if the walls of the houses could talk, I always wonder about like if the if these dishes could talk, the stories that they could tell and the things that they've seen and the changes is just insane. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, yeah, just like your comparison to old houses. I follow a lot of old house Facebook groups and people always tell the story of the people they bought it from and the people before them. and. Every now and then you get the history of that with, with dishes as well, but it's always, it always makes it fun. What's next for you, Bex? Um, oh, that's a good question. I think probably continue with the podcast um, and start hunting for some of my unicorn pieces. Um, the rare, hard to find ones. I've been selling off a little bit of my collection every month. Um, the ones that aren't as exciting anymore to me, just to be able to get some of the the ones I've been searching for for a while. So it's probably next on my list. One of my things that I like to do is find sets new in the box, mm. like never mm -hmm. opened or opened, but like never used. And so yeah. this past weekend, that's one of the things I was doing is I'm like, all right, let me see what I have in the box and I am going to part with and resell the set that I have that's not new in the box because mm -hmm. I don't need, you know, saying I don't need five sets of everything. <laughs> it's okay to let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, Bex, where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Pyrex with Bex. Um, I have a website as well, pyrexwithbex.com. And you can find me on whatnot too, selling at Pyrex with Bex as well. And Poshmark. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Find me everywhere. I am everywhere. <laughs> it's a good place to be. <laughs> All right, Bex, thanks so much for coming on the podcast and chatting about our mutual passion. And I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. And I definitely will be listening to your future episodes. I love your podcast. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kelly. <laughs>